Hi there, good morning. I am just seeing your comment there, Laura. I've just had a look there and it's working for me. So just refresh the page or go out and come back in again. Um, YouTube has its funny moments. A couple of weeks ago, it wouldn't work for about an hour. So if you can see this, let me know, Laura, if you are here watching this and um, you may be able to, you may well be okay. Hi there, everybody. Let me know if you're here. Let me know in the comments if you're here. I'd love to see what you're up to. Um, what are you knitting? What's on your needles this week? That's what we want to know. What's on your needles? I realized Can Canala, <laughs> I've been saying your name wrong. Is it Can Canala? Um, or do you have a shortened version of that? Or is that not your real name and you just called yourself that on YouTube? It's a lovely name if it is your name. Hi there, Kim. Morning. Red Panda. Hello. Nice to see you here. What's on your needles? Good morning, Jackie. Oh, that's your last name. Oh, how funny. Shane is joining from the US. What? That is, yes, that is quarter to four in the morning. Ugh. Tiffany, oh, that's lovely. Okay, I'm gonna call you Tiffany. And I have to remember, Cancanella is Tiffany. Perfect, right. You're, how are you managing that? <laughs> when I know some people get up at stupid o'clock and do yoga. <laughs> But um, Heather's here from Maine as well. Wow, that's dedication. I'm not a morning, I used to be a morning person. I used to be a real morning person, you know, getting up at six o'clock and that's it, that's fine. But um, I did a quiz recently and it was, are you an owl, are you a wolf or are you a bear? And I'm a bear. And the owl obviously wakes up nice and early. It doesn't matter at all. The wolf just is awake until one or two o'clock in the morning and their brain is still firing. And I'm the bear and I don't really get going until 10 o'clock in the morning, but I can have real amazing inspiration and creative bursts um, like eight, nine, 10 o'clock in the evening. And I will just, <sighs> if you see me answering your email at 10 o'clock in the evening and you're thinking, what is she doing? Just because actually I can get going and do some stuff on the computer, edit videos, all sorts of things at stupid o'clock in the evening. So I'm the bear. It's a really interesting quiz I did. If you can find it, I really can't remember what it is, but it's, are you an owl, a wolf or a bear? There you go. Some of you were obviously owls. I've just started the sock, sock head hat pattern. What on earth does that mean? I used to knit beanies. <clears throat> 2008, I made this pattern because they were so popular. The beanie where it's not just a hat, it kind of like hangs halfway down your head as well. So I made a lot of them. So is that the kind of thing maybe, Kim? Um, Tiffany, I thought I was going to fall asleep. I did one of this is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. You're randomly waking up, switch on YouTube, why not, eh? Just finished knitting the hat. Fabulous, because you just finished your scarf last week. You all need rounds of applause, rounds of applause, rounds of applause. Fabulous. Started searching and stitches had a death grip tightness, so I sat down before I hurt myself, yes. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> um, circular needles can be afraid that everything's going wrong because it doesn't look right. So yeah, yeah. Um, Red Panda, I just finished knitting baby items for the Etsy shop, yes. You posted yesterday, yes, yes. Fabulous. 
it's a slouchy, slouchy, that's the word, isn't it? Slouchy knit hat and four ply yarn. Oh, cool. Well done. I bet that was a lot of stitches and a lot of rows if it's four ply yarn. Well done. Well done. Mm. Yes. Boys were in love with those slouchy hats 10 years ago. Shane is knitting a Horcrux wash clock from the Harry Potter knitting book. Ah, see mine there on the needles. Cool. That's exciting. And <laughs> there was a meme yesterday. I shared it on Instagram. I mean, it doesn't matter who you vote for. I'm not at all worried about who you vote for. Let's not do politics here. But one of the, the memes was, okay, we've got one of his Horcruxes. Now where are the others? <laughs> so obviously they've removed him from Twitter. I think that's what they were trying to imply. <laughs> I got the Harry Potter knitting book from the library. Oh, cool. And did you see anything in there that you could knit? Because there are lots of different um, stages of knitting in there. Really complicated colour patterns as, as well as nice easy ones that you can start if you're a beginner. So, yes, there are lots of things. Yes. <laughs> Tiffany's laughing. Of course, I mean, yeah. You're either... Pop in the champagne or life is, just feels like it's going on and life is going on so yeah good morning Cara from the Hooting Pirates the snitch socks are cool aren't they yeah and it's such a very clever simple way of doing a gold ball with two wings feels so brilliant actually I just saw the news um, and I saw Dr. Fauci talking um, from the press briefing room in the White House and he looks so different, he looks so relaxed. <laughs> yeah, this is what we're doing now. His arms are all over the place and he's just in his free spirit. Whereas before he was, I got to say everything that I'm supposed to say and if I go off topic, then I might get fired and we don't want that because everyone needs me. <laughs> So, yeah, the snitch is cute, beautiful. Okay, Sammy, I just finished a scarf for my daughter. Yes, waiting for the yarn to start the shawl. And I hope that shawl's for you. One thing we have to remember when we're knitters is that we can get into this zone of going, okay, I'm knitting for her, then I'm knitting for him, then I'm knitting for them, then I'm knitting for that. And, and got to come back and knit for yourself sometimes. I mean, Sammy, maybe you have been knitting for yourself as well. But, but yes, knit for yourself as well. Everyone is more relaxed. <laughs> oh, sorry you're late, Leslie. You're eight minutes. We're eight minutes in. That's fine. On my needles is the simple scarf variation. Oh, cool. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. I have been knitting... Stuff that you can't see yet. I will show you in a couple of weeks' time. This is exciting. Next week video, you will see the yarn that I'm knitting with. Next week's video, I'm really excited about. I hope you like it. it, it it's coming in the form of a game show. <laughs> I've had fun with my new um, editing software, and I just had to. So it's it just it is it's a fun video, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, so I'm knitting with that yarn at the moment and yes I will start showing you what I'm knitting but I've also because of my eyes and the fact that the glasses aren't here yet let me just see I am getting messages telling me what's happening with them particularly this one to the other um, there we go the lenses are on order Two days ago, it was sent to the lab. So I know that we're moving along the process. It's weird ordering glasses online. So strange ordering glasses online. online. So um, I'm not doing anything really close knitting. I'm not doing anything. I'm certainly not sewing the seams of those scrunchies that I showed you last week. But I am knitting a lovely little bit of garter stitch for... Another that was scrunchy. So I can actually sit here and do this. Right. 
I wasn't shown to move off circular needles to DPNs, so my stitches were so stretched. I knew something was off. Now, you need to look up the magic loop method because the magic loop method is what you need if you're doing that. I always use magic loop. Very rarely. I think it's the butterfly stitch cowl. Possibly is the only one where I've not had to use magic loop and it's actually just sat on the needles quite happily. But magic loop is my best friend when I'm using circulars, really, really is. And I mean, I've got the circle skills workshop. If you want to go and have a look at that, that will just take you through the very simple foundations of using circular knitting needles. Um, and once you've got used to them, we then knit flat circles as well. Um, inside out and outside in. So you can go and have a look at that and you'll just go through all of the circular knitting techniques if you want to. It's called Circle Skills and it's on academy.knitwithhannah.co.uk. So that's an option for you, but you can just look up Magic Loop Circular Knitting on YouTube and you'll find it. But um, yeah, that will help you. And I don't use double pointed needles particularly often at all because I use the magic loop and it is so much easier. Jackie, can't be a bad mug of coffee relaxing while knitting dolly clothes for me, for my granddaughter. I'm watching you with earpods. <laughs> Partner was giving me weird looks. <laughs> or listening to this crazy person on YouTube, I'm not surprised he was giving you weird looks. <laughs> Hello, I'm a crack of dawn person up at four, I'm ready to bed. Gardening in Maine usually starts in June. I'm usually out in the garden by six. Yes, yes. When it's hot in the summer here, and like some years I'm really into gardening and some years I'm not that really into gardening, but when I am really into gardening, eight o'clock in the morning, yeah, got to do it then. I, l I must say, Heather, um, Jackie, knitting dolls clothes. Oh, I used to do that. Couldn't remember that. Leslie, good morning, good morning, Leslie. I've just finished a pair of bed socks for my husband. Easy pattern. I used to knit about 40 years ago. Oh, cool. It's all coming back. Yes. Stitch patterns are such fun. You can change a pair of socks just by changing the stitch pattern. And you can change a scarf. You've got the same number of stitches on the needle, and all of a sudden it's a completely different scarf because it's got a different stitch pattern. Perfect. No. No, Tiffany. If you use a magic loop, you can... Start the project with them all evenly on the um, evenly on the circular needle, and then you can just use the magic loop when it when you reduce your stitches. That's it. Boom. Yeah. Shane, I'm just finishing a Slytherin house scarf to wear while I watch the Harry Potter films. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're there. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's your. Bedtime. Oh, crikey. Do you work shifts? Or are you really a very strange wolf night owl mixture? <laughs> wow. Heather on skates. I live in Maine. I had a wonderful Skype call this week with my sister who lives in Ontario. Oh, cool. We were knitting a hat using a pattern I designed. Lovely. Yes. We're knitting on... Zoom at the moment. That's just what it is, isn't it? Hi from Portugal, Eunice. Hi from UK. Yes. Yeah, do look into that, um, Tiffany, because the magic loop will really help just transition when you've got too many stitches. Um, um, sorry. Stitches trying to go on too much of a needle. Yeah. You're just a night owl. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've got a friend who's like that, and she, she's my friend who is actually helping me build my website at the moment. I am paying her, but, but yeah, she's doing that. She, um, she works at midnight. She's up working at that time of night, and it just is fine for her. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, so my needles are bouncing around. <laughs> Oh dear. 
Now, I had some questions in the comments over the last week, and I thought I would just answer them as well. But I do want to say, did you any of you watch my New Year's 2021 video? And did you have a think about whether you wanted a three-month resolution thing? Because that's what I said. It was 12 months um, in this year. Probably seems a bit odd because we're going to have so many different things happening this year. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, certainly in the UK, we're in lockdown for at least... I wouldn't be surprised if we're in really strict measures for the next 12 weeks, for the first 12 weeks. We've said, oh, it's until the middle of February, but who knows? Um, what do you think you're going to be knitting for the first three months? Yeah, knitting university and personal life, good. Yeah, I do. I'm going to knit a cardigan. I don't do it very well with button bands. Is it possible to adjust pattern to include a button band? Yes, definitely. Or any simple ideas to help? Definitely. You can add another four or five stitches, depending on your yarn, maybe be six stitches, onto the sides of the front. And then you need to work out which side the button band goes on, where the buttonholes are, <laughs> where the buttons are. This, I, um, I get annoyed sometimes. Trousers do this a lot. Buy a pair of trousers from the shop and they are styled for women, but the button and the zip is um, going the men's way. Not on, not on. Um, for a woman, it's right over left. So the buttons are on the left and the buttons are over, the buttonholes are on the right. And for a man, it's buttons on the right and buttonholes on the left. So you just need to get that right and just stick a few more stitches in the front. And you need to do them either ribbed or garter stitch so that they don't curl. That's the one thing. Don't do them an extra stocking stitch. You could do the moss stitch as well. That would be a good one to choose, but make sure that they're not gonna curl over and you'll be sorted, yeah. Or, you can go and have a look. I have got picking up stitches right there in the, it might be knitting jargon playlist. Because picking up stitches, if you look at what I'm doing when I'm picking up stitches, it may feel easier than you think it might be. So go and have a look at that as well. Watch the whole video and see what I do and how I make a mistake and fix it. Um, because then you might get an idea that actually that doesn't look so difficult. I could probably do it. Um, yeah, so go and have a look at that video as well. That will help you. Good for you, Sharon, knitting a cardigan. Yes. And adjusting it to suit you. That's fine. So Tiffany watched it and thought it was a nice idea. Plan to knit a cable headband next. Cool. And for crochet, I'm doing a poncho and an Easter table runner. Wow, that sounds fabulous. Main plan for knitting is reading lots of books from the library to learn the ins and outs. Yeah, good. I'm not even sure our libraries are open at the moment. I don't think they are. Yeah. Secondhand Rose says, what needles would you recommend to make a baby blanket? Very long straight needles or circular needles and knit straight on them. Do you have the room for stitches on the cable? This is really interesting because I'm about to do some filming on why I choose particular needles for knitting for baby blankets. I will give you the, um, what's the word? I'll give you the short version. What's the name of those books? When you've got a novel and you want the short version of it, I can't think what it's called. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Okay, yes, I use long straight needles. Long straight needles, let me find them. It depends on how many stitches there are. These are 35 centimeters long and they're made of birch. If they are 
metal, they could well bend. Cliff notes, thank you, Cara. Yes, I'll give you the cliff notes version. They could well bend. If they're bamboo, they may not be strong enough. If they're plastic, I've even had plastic ones snap in the middle because baby blankets could be heavy. It will depend on the yarn that you're knitting with. Um, so I do use these, I have used these, and I've been using these in the recent weeks and months to knit baby blankets. Also, when I've had much longer um, baby blankets, a lot, lot more stitches on my needles, I use circular needles where they are like that. And the only reason I use these sometimes is that I know I'm not gonna be putting it down for six weeks at a time, and then all the stitches will be bunched up and it will almost feel like it's creased. Um, because I put it down and I pick it up again. I put it down and I pick it up again. It's not a problem. Um, so definitely, I'm using 80 centimeter cable needles. So there you go. That's the that's the abridged version. That's the cliff notes. I am going to do a um, a whole video about knitting with cotton yarn, and part of it will be the um, the needles that I choose. So these are five and a half millimeter, they are birch, and they are in the shop or they aren't in the shop, I can't remember. Can't, if they're, can't remember if they're in the shop yet, I'm not sure that they are. I will find out, but they will definitely be in the shop soon. Cotton and I don't like each other right now. That sounds intriguing. Do you know my Hogwarts, your Hogwarts house? I am Ravenclaw and um, Hufflepuff. Um, honestly, it's like Brexit. <laughs> I do it one day and I'm one. I do it another day, I'm another. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> it's like Brexit. I think that is going to be a horrible a reference for anyone who ever says, oh dear, yes, 49.52, abstained, I don't know. <sighs> Brexit. Oh dear. Has anyone tried clicking the What to Knit in Isolation video? It's not working for me. Oh no, still again. Oh no. <laughs> I'm a raven puff, yes. Um... Can anyone else click on that and see if they can see it? I mean, I can't do anything because this is YouTube. Um, I'll tell you what, I will also find it on my website because there you might be able to find it. If you go to the Knit with Hannah blog and literally there's a little search bar there, you can look up um, isolation or lockdown. Okay, Red Panda says it works for her, but that is the video on my blog post. Okay, oh, Kim's internet keeps dropping out. Ugh. Right, Sharon, I have Knit Pro Zing Circular Needles. How do you decide the length of the extension additions relating to the stitches? Yes. Um... For me, it is instinct. It's um, instinct. It's just, it is kind of intuition. It's difficult. Um, check the pattern. If you're knitting from a pattern, it will tell you how wide the finished item is going to be. That will give you an, a clue. If it's going to be something like, oh dear, I haven't got a, here we go, I have got a thing. If it's going to be 24 to 36 inches, then you can use an 80 centimeter ruler and you're there. 
80 centimeter extension and you're there. Um, if it's going to be shorter, more like, I don't know, 20 or 26 stitch, um, inches, then use a 60. I'm, I'm using inches because if you, UK and US both know what they mean. Unless, of course, you're a millennial and then you're completely in the clouds when it comes to inches. But I've used inches and centimetres interchangeably all my life. But in 80 centimeter, we'll be fine. The, um, uh, yeah, 80 centimeters should be fine for a baby blanket. And then you're not bunching and you're not leaving too much at the ends. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want to be confused that you're knitting a circular thing and you start knitting from the wrong end. Yeah. So 80 centimetres, seems fine. Sharon prefers inches and Red Panda is slowly learning about inches. <laughs> this is what I learned as a child. From your knuckle to the top of your thumb, that's an inch. So that's easy to do. An inch is two and a half centimetres. Boom, finish. That's all I needed to learn. And we used to um, do our heights by foot and centi foot and inches. That's it. So. It's funny because if I haven't got a ruler or a measuring tape to hand, I will sit here and use my thumb to figure out how much I've knitted. <laughs> oh dear. Second hand rows. In, in one of your videos you recommend before starting a pattern with techniques you've never practiced them before, to practice them. I've been pra practicing hexagonal cable for a cardigan. So glad I did. Fabulous. Cool. Oh, that is good. Oh, I'm pleased that was helpful. <laughs> and Tiffany learnt that with a thumb as well. <laughs> We've all got different sized thumbs. That's the problem. But <laughs> if my husband was to put his hand next to mine, you'd kind of go, whoa. He's got a very large hand. <laughs> oh dear. Right, yes, yeah, so I was saying I had lots of um, comments this week and questions that I thought we might just go over here. What was my favorite knitting stitch? That's a really simple question, isn't it? And it's just, it's, it's difficult to answer in some ways because I love so many stitches, but in other ways, it's so simple. I love garter stitch because it shows off the knitting. Um, you really get to see the yarn as well. Um, and it's easy. Don't say that out loud. It's really easy. I love garter stitch. I really, really do love garter stitch. Um, yes, it's easy to knit. But I also love cables, I must say. I love cables. If you were to say cable or lace, I think I'd say cable. There you go. That's your garter stitch. I love it. And no, I'm, this isn't a face mask. <laughs> and I love this yarn as well. Oh, cable, garter stitch does so much, so many favours to different um, yarns. If it's a fluffy yarn, if it's a tweedy yarn, if it's a boucle yarn, you'll still see the stitch pattern and it won't be hidden by the yarn. Whereas if you're trying to use a really fancy yarn and you end up with it kind of the effort you put into a lace or a cable or something gets completely lost because the yarn doesn't show it because the yarn takes over, then you're better off using a garter stitch. So I like that. Yes. Cables. Um, I haven't got the, pattern with me here but I realized how many cables I knitted in the past with really cheap yarn and I just feel so disappointed because it what I knitted didn't last and it it's really really it really is a shame um it's there's a I know there's a cardigan out there that I put so much effort into he was a really 
complex twisting cable. I think there were about eight cables that all twisted amongst each other. It was beautiful. And at some point on the sleeve, I went wrong. And I just, I didn't take it all the way back. I just took part of it back and I re um, repaired it. And, ah, oh, I just wish I had that cardigan still, but I, I couldn't keep it because it just kind of fell apart. The, um, the shape was completely lost. I mean, it was a beautiful collar as well and kind of just dragged and didn't, didn't stay in shape properly. And it just, real shame, real shame. Ah, garter stitch scarf. The um, garter stitch scarves that I've got on my shop, you can get the you can get the patterns for, um, and you can you can get the wool in the US as well. Um, Sharon. Oh, here we go, Mishka. I'm about to start knitting a poncho sweater with a gorgeous lacy type edging all the way around. That is exciting. Ooh. Um, Red Panda, the first scarf I made when I was 14 was garter stitch and I still have it. Oh. Sharon, do you block? Because I'm old school and I never used them before. In fact, I've never I've seen them before. Yeah, I didn't really use them. This is interesting. Here we go. Right, this is my grandma's book. Pressing. And this is what my mum used to do when we were knitting. And I, really? She get the iron out. Never press knitted garments without a cloth between the iron and the fabric. Yeah. And really press. Don't slide the iron over the garment. Unless it is desired to shrink the garment, the iron should not be very hot or the cloth very damp. When pressing rayon garments, the iron should be quite cool and the fabric may be destroyed. <laughs> Avoid pressing ribbing unless it is used for the hem of a garment and needs to be pressed out to the tension of the rest of the pattern. So, yes, I remember my mum getting the iron out to press when I, what I'd knitted. And I would be so scared that it was going to ruin it. Um, I don't think blocking is mentioned. I did, maybe I did see it, maybe I didn't. Let me just double check. Curled edges, cable patterns button loops, basic stitches. Yep, blocking isn't mentioned. So I'm sure it was done in the old days, but when I'd knitted a jumper, I used to wear it and that, that was how it was. So um, you can go too far with the blocking. You can't go, oh, cry, cry. But if you knit a lot of lace shawls and you really want the edges to show that you've done all of that work, then knitting lace shawls means that you block probably for every project. So it's more common with some types of knitting than others. So, yeah. And for cable knitting, it can actually help just move the cables because it can really bunch up like a rib if you're knitting lots of cables. It can really bunch it all together. Um, so cable blocking, blocking cables can really help. But um, I don't do it a great deal. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany is making a poncho with Karen Latte cakes. So it's super soft and fuzzy. It does sound lovely, yes. I've melted fabric with an iron before. Yes. That's what it said. Don't use it too hot and don't use it the cloth too wet if you're... Um, if you're pressing rayon, <laughs> rayon <laughs> synthetic. Oh dear. Can you knit any yarn? This is the next one. Can you knit any yarn with right needles to get the right tension? Oh my goodness me. So this is, this is where you go, okay, well I've tested this swatch and it's far too tight so I need to use a bigger needle. And then you have to start thinking, do I just need a different yarn? And probably yes. Um, because the fabric won't feel right. If you knit something and you want to try and get the need the stitches to be um, to be further apart and bigger, and you use much, much larger needles, 
then it's going to feel loose. There's going to be holes. You're going to see the holes in uh, amongst the stitches, not just in between the stitches. And it, it won't feel like the fabric that the designer has created the pattern for. So in that respect, you'd probably then just have to say, okay, this yarn isn't going to work. I'll use it for something else. And I need to find a different, um, a different yarn to knit this pattern with. Because you can go too far with it. Yes, you probably can. You can get stitches that you can get needles that are 15 millimeters, that are 20 millimeters, that are 25 millimeters. But using a fine sock yarn to knit a, a chunky jumper and using a really thick yarn to do that, no, don't do it. You just have to find a different yarn. So, and there will be times when you've got a chunky yarn and you're trying to make it smaller and smaller and smaller. And you'll end up with such a stiff garment and you won't actually be able to get the stitches that small. So, again, it's Please just think about it. Go and get a different yarn. So some, sometimes it will work, and other times you just need to completely step back and go, come at it with a different perspective, and you'll, you'll be much better off. Always terrified of blocking when it comes to acrylic yarn. <laughs> it will work quite well. It will sit in place, but yeah. And go and watch my blocking video, because... Um, I use a technique that I don't think I've seen many other people use and in, and I really like it actually it was just so that I don't make so much mess and then so that I don't make much mess it works really well <laughs> so definitely yeah um, okay how can you place a stitch stitches on a stitch holder so that it's in the right place and in the right direction when you start knitting again I'm going to say that's going to be really difficult because some of your patterns will say that you need to start from one direction or another direction. It might be where you started knitting, finished knitting from, or it might be the other side. And they will mostly say, start knitting, put the stitches back so that you're knitting on the right side or the wrong side. You need to get to know on that pattern that you're knitting, which is the right side and which is the wrong side. Sometimes that will be determined because of the pattern. That's very, very obvious. It will be either a color pattern or a cable or a lace or something kind of pattern. But it will could also be very simply determined by the way that the cast on um, holds, um, sits. I'll just show you what a stitch holder is, Tiffany. It is. one of these for example if you are knitting a cardigan and you get to here on the front you will knit you'll put all these stitches on the um you might put all the stitches on a stitch holder because you stop knitting there and then you knit the other front and then you knit the sleeves on the back and then you put all of the stitches on a circular needle and you knit all the way up and you decrease and decrease up to the collar that's just one example so you need lots of stitch holders so they all go here and they all go here but when you start knitting the pieces need to be either facing one way or the other way and if you put one on the wrong way then you'll be wearing a cardigan where the front bit is round the wrong way and that bit's around the right way so you'll have a very strange pattern on your cardigan um so the putting the stitches on the stitch holder it's not about how you put them on the stitch holder it's about how you take them off and how you start knitting again and that's when you need to understand what's the right side and what's the wrong side so it could be um it could be very simply the right side is where you see the pattern but it could be other side um it could be that the right side is determined when you do your first row in your knitting it could be that you've cast on exactly as the pattern says, and then it says, first row, knit, PS, right side. It could be in brackets, it could be right side. So you could actually put a little um, a little piece of yarn on your knitting there, just a tag to say, this is the right side. And I'm, when I'm seeing that, that's the right side of my knitting. So Sharon says, right side, left side on a pattern is when it's at the front or held up to your body. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, 
but it could be so many different things that determine the right side or the wrong side. Um, yeah, because if you're knitting cushion cover, it will be the obvious, it could be obvious, but then again, it could be like this. It could be, oh, but it looks the same from both sides. What's the right side? And then if you want to be pedantic about it, you will look at your casting on and see whether it looks neat or whether it looks a bit bumpy. Can't really see it from that side, but yeah. Don't worry so much about it. It will, it will be easier and a lot of knitting patterns will give you good instructions about which is right side and which is wrong side. So there you go. Knitting is much more involved in crocheting than it seems. Um, yes, crocheting, you do need a lots of different stitches and you need to get them right, like triple crochet, double crochet. And I don't know whether I told you this, I decided not to do crochet on a crochet stroke knitting channel on YouTube because I knew that knitting could reach everybody and crochet would be really well focused and say, you're either a UK crochet or a US crochet. Because single crochet and double crochet and means two different things. So. Kim, I've started knitting a hat in four ply with 160 stitches on circular needles, 16 inches long. Found it awkward, now trying DPN's 40 stitches on each needle. Yeah, that sounds fine. That sounds okay to me. Yes, Sharon, I mean, when reading a pattern, it says left front, is that when it's laid down in front of you or it's your, that's your left side, the left side of your body? Yes, yes. And it's um, very much always talks about how you would be wearing it. Yes. Yes, the pattern always talks about how you're wearing it rather than what you're looking at when you're knitting, yeah. American crochets learned UK terms along with ours. Oh, right. Most of what you know is UK terms. I only use millimetres for hot cook sizes. Okay. Oh, how confusing. Because you're sitting there going, well, that's a single crochet, but it's also a double crochet. And that's a double crochet, but it's also a triple, or is it half triple, or... <laughs> oh, no. Crikey. Right, and this is one thing I wanted to actually celebrate because I've had lots of messages in the comments this week and it's someone who's knitting for the first time or someone who is knitting and they've only just picked up the needles after a long break. And I just, I just want to celebrate. I mean, I, it's the middle of winter so lots of people do pick up knitting at this time of year. Lots of people pick up knitting because it's January and it's New Year's resolutions. It's, oh, what can I do this year? And it's really exciting to get up and pick up a new hobby. But it's difficult also. Um, it kind of feels restrained because oh, we're knitting because of lockdown. We're knitting because of what's going on in the world. So it does feel kind of this sorrow to it as well but it, the sorrow is bringing us together and it's giving you something to relax with to find joy with and find that balance with like we talked about a few weeks ago it's, it's it is it's a difficult time and we do need this kind of thing to just say okay I know I need a break because it's difficult out here. No matter what you're doing, we all hear the news and we all hear what and feel what's going on as well. I know I feel it. I know I feel it. And there are times when I just have to go, okay, let me just release it all. And then I can come back. And letting that go and um, being with my knitting and creativity is a, is a big big help so yeah the I think the devastation in the world is very very out in the open at the moment 
all of the time, whether we know it or not, there's devastation in the world and we don't necessarily, we're not necessarily aware of it. But at the moment, we are very aware of it. So, yes, this is this is something that we can be very, um, we can celebrate it. We can really, really feel proud that we're taking this time for ourselves and letting ourselves get kind of come into balance again and come into this point where we're saying, yeah, I'm okay. I can do this. I can get through this. And uh, yeah, it's well said, Tiffany. It's a bit of happiness in the middle of all the chaos. It is. It's this uh, moment of connection, togetherness. And um, I'm doing uh, the Yoga with Adrienne 30 day yoga. It's not, she's not calling it a challenge. It is, it, it's just 30 days of yoga at the beginning of the year that she does every year. And it's breath this year. As soon as I saw it was breath, this is one of the first things I learned in yoga, it was breath. And so as soon as I saw that and I thought, perfect year for it, I'm going to do this. This is, this is me this time. There were some other years where I thought that topic really doesn't suit me, so I'm not going to bother. And I will just do other things instead. And I do other classes. But this year, it's really helped. And Lester, yesterday, it was pause. That was her focus for the day. And I thought, that's what we are. We're pausing with our knitting. We're taking that breath in the chaos. So yes, really, really important. So I'm proud of everybody for picking up the needles. Red Panda, I have to go back to doing uni work now. Oh, okay. Yes, go back to your studies. <laughs> but thank you for being an amazing person. <laughs> oh, thank you. I hope everyone has an amazing day and night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cool. Kim, I feel lost without knitting or sewing. And I had a down day yesterday. Yeah. I am so looking forward to the time when I can have my sewing machine out all the time. Um, I know I would love a bigger bungalow than we've got now. And I just dream of having a room where my sewing machine can be out there and actually can have my fabric just kind of laid out on the table and I can be ready to sew whenever I want to. Um, that is a dream of mine even if it's just 10 or 20 minutes a day and then I can knit as well with sewing I can't sew for very much long for a very long time it's like crochet when I'm holding the needles like that the crochet hook and the sewing needle like that I actually get cramp in my hand it just no matter how much I try it's just something that's part of me so sewing with a sewing machine is something that I just love the sound of it I use the pedal with a bear or, or a foot with just a sock on it and just it feels so natural I've sewed with the sewing machine since I was a teenager and we have one of those old singer machines so yeah love it Sharon I find knitting takes away the depression yes and bead as well and I haven't been out of my home since February 2020 and I'm waiting an operation I can't get a date due to Covid oh yeah. And I mean, I have been out a little bit. I've been out in the car when Nick's had a um, job interview. I've gone in the car with him and I've sat in the car in the car park while he's had his job interview just to keep him company and to give him that boost and to say, you can do it. Um, we've been out a couple of times to do, to do photos. But generally, yes, I've been at home since last year because of my health condition. So it's difficult. Um, oh. so I, I, can't, I can't believe what it's like Be, either being in pain or knowing that something isn't right inside you and you just know that it's just being delayed and delayed best wishes to you Sharon L Jack hi from South Africa hey there how are you doing I crochet mostly, but I picked up my knitting needles to make some teddies for a friend. Oh, cool. Oh, that is exciting. Oh, loving to love knitting toys. I used to love knitting stuffed Christmas decorations like snowmen and things. Actually, I've got one here. I don't know why it's sitting here. I can't imagine where it came from, but for some reason this appeared while I was tidying up and it just appeared. <laughs> so this is the kind of thing I love knitting. I used to make little snowmen year after year after year for our Christmas tree and they would always have different colored um scarves and hats 
Matching, of course. Tiffany, yes, I've sewn since I was 11. It's lovely. Yes, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's lovely. Kim, I think it's more relaxing than knitting. Possibly. Not when the sewing machine gets all stuffed up, though. I love cutting fabric. I love preparing. Second-hand rows. I'm second-hand rows. How can you be second-hand? You're perfect. Oh. Or do you sell second-hand stuff or just love second-hand stuff? Vintage. I'm doing yoga with Adrienne too. Oh. Bit behind. There's no behind in yoga. <laughs> An old yoga teacher used to say that to me. There's no behind in yoga. You are perfectly, you are where you need to be at this moment. I'm on day six. I've been doing all the other 30 days that she's done since June. Oh, wow. I was wondering about that. How can I carry on once she's finished? I don't think I want to go into a membership. I just, I did have a look at the app earlier and it was so difficult to move my way around it that I thought I need to do this for myself and get myself organized. So I'll see how I get on, but I'm not sure how I'll move on after she's finished this. That and knitting regularly has been getting me through this. Yeah, so, so true. Tiffany, knitting is less painful on the fingers than crochet to me. I can knit for about six hours straight. Good on you. Whoa. I can knit for a long time. Very true. That is cute, isn't it? Jane, as a member of our North London knitting group, I've really missed meetings in the local CAF, but we now meet on Zoom. It's not the same, but it does help. It means that we're keeping in touch. Yes, it is. It's so important. Yeah. I've got friends who I meet up with regularly um, on Zoom, just a little group of us from our local church. And it's so, so helpful just to say, how are you doing? What's up? Yeah. Kim, I needed a toy teddy bear for my grandson. Cool. Oh. This is funny. L Jack 1007. I'm making Elvis outfits for my teddies. My friend is a huge Elvis fan. That's funny. They're going to love that. They are going to love that. Tiffany, sounds so nice, Jane. I would love to join a knitting group after all this COVID is over. Yeah, I mean, come and join the membership if you if you can't find a near a nearby one in person. Um, that's just opening today um, for next week. I've just set up the um, calls for the next three months. This is um, actually something. If you're a new knitter and you want this, then I'll just let you know the masterful knitter is on promotion this week and the promotion finishes today so with the multiple knitter you won't just get all of the information in there that's talking about yarn it's talking about fixing mistakes it's talking about the benefits of knitting it's helping you be creative with your knitting not just following patterns or following what someone else says and it's helping you feel confident enough in your knitting to say okay what am i knitting next let's get on with it because I, you can get to a stage in your knitting where you go, ha, huh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to just look at all these patterns uh, and maybe buy all this yarn, but I'm not really sure what I want to put on my needles next. So it's just helping you move through that and just become a confident enough knitter to say, actually, yes, I can knit that. I'm going to put it on my needles and get on with it. So that's the course that um, I'm selling this week on promotion. So if you want to join that, then what you also get is three months of membership and three months of membership means that you get three live video um, chats similar to this but you can come on video and we can talk about your knitting in a much more personal way so that is um on promotion this week and the profitable knit the um masterful knitter always also has six classic stitch patterns bookmarks um tutorials with it as well so that's happening today and that is almost that's 12 hours left and then they won't then you won't be able to get the um the free membership with it so if you want that and you'd love to join the membership alongside all of that then 
that's um something that can help you. It just dives deeper than I can do on YouTube. Um, let me just see if I can find it quickly. It's academy.nickwithhannah.co.uk. I'm reading, uh, where are you? Oh, <laughs> Kim says, I meant to say it's more re relaxing knitting than sewing. Okay, so, I mean, who doesn't like both of them, eh? <laughs> yeah. You can sit on the sofa and watch Netflix. Sometimes you can't do that when you're sewing. Um, Sharon, I love the way you know English style. I can't do the other styles. My fingers just won't go there. There you go. Do what you can. There you are. Rose, I love vintage clothes and raved my grandma's wardrobe. And she used to call me secondhand Rose. There you go. Then I had a vintage blog called it. Oh, cool. There was a point where I wanted to raid my mum's wardrobe. She wouldn't let me. But I raided my dad's old ties. My mum used to make my dad ties in the 70s. And if you can imagine 60s and 70s ties, they were just bizarre. So I sewed them all together and made myself a skirt. The colours. The colours and the print blow your mind. Uh, Tiffany, I'm reading The Knowledgeable Knitter right now. It's detailed and strict. <laughs> yeah. Well, depend on who's written it and who. Um, I think I, I know, I know the most. Yes, multiple knitter. It would. It will also depend on the intention behind it. So if it is, um, this is how you do it. And if you want to knit this, then that's that. Go straight for it. This is how you do it. Then it will be straight. Yeah. Joe, hi Joe. Thought I'd make it today, but plans changed. You're welcome. And you can always watch a replay. Anyone can watch a replay. Um, Secondhand rows. Do you think it's best to knit or crochet toys? There seems to be a lot more crochet patterns for toys than knitted ones. Personally, um, it's a really difficult, really difficult thing for me because there is so much regulation around toys safety eyes and all that kind of thing um and how much stuffing will come through the stitches that kind of thing so it's for me it's really difficult i prefer to sew when i've made toys toys i've sewn them um toys i've got any here i have actually oh yes that kind of thing i've sewn them um, and there you go, there's another one, I've sewn them, that kind of thing, and I have only knitted things that are not for toys, but for display, like Christmas decorations, so it's a really difficult balance, it's, is it safe, or is it just for show? Yeah, knit, you can knit and you can crochet. Knit crochet, if it's a really tight crochet, the stuffing won't come through. And knitting, again, in that respect, it needs to be a tight fabric and then it won't um, come through the, uh, the stuffing won't come through either. The other option, and I have done this in the past, is to knit something, but it has a sewn inside to it. So I knitted cubes for babies. Um, and I, knitted, I made sure I sewed it, sewed the stuffing inside something first, and then the knitted um, outside went on top. So you can do both, and it's whether you want to actually give it to a baby or child, or whether you want to just have it for display. They're both are equally equally valid. There you go. Um, the amagurumi, amagurumi. I've never say that. They are basically crocheted, but you can get knitted items, knitted patterns for them as well now. There you go. 
both are nice. There are more, there's more seeming with knitting. That's very true. Um, and knitted um, toys are classy and cute. If you want to find someone who does amazing, absolutely amazing knitted toys, and these aren't for playing with, these are, these are for display, go and find Knitty Kids on Instagram. Amazing. That's um, Gudrun in Toronto. She does some amazing little kids. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, hi, Hannah. I love your videos. Hi, Emily. Um, an experimental jumper using different stitches. Oh, cool. Yes, the messy textured look. I would suggest you go and look up. What's her name? Virgo. Virgo Knits on YouTube on Instagram, sorry, not on YouTube. She's got some really lovely stuff. And that's just big jumpers with just experimental stuff. A lot of them are one of a kind and some of them are just the same pattern that she uses over again. Jo has made both knitted and crocheted toys. They're both good, but she finds more joy in knitting. There you go. So Jo finds more joy in knitting. Uh, the knowledgeable knitter is about understanding the inner workings of knitting, yeah. It's um, it's a very well-known book, and I actually haven't got it, but yes. Jane, our group is a small bunch of friends who all knit, but we're all different standards. That is very helpful, yeah, um, because you can see that some people choose one path of knitting and some people choose the other. And you go, well, they've got that specialism, and they've got that specialism, and then you can help each other. And yeah, it can, it can make a real difference to everybody's knitting growth as well then. And we're gonna have fewer mistakes amongst us because everyone will say, oh, I've done that before, I've done that before, I've done that before. And it can just feel a lot easier. Sharon, I can crochet, but following a pattern is a no-no. <laughs> I know, um, especially this is especially Japanese and they are more likely to follow charts when they're crocheting rather than uh, written patterns. So that might be an idea for you if you ever want to consider that if you're crocheting. Um, knitting patterns are easier to read and I just bought a new sewing machine to be doing that when I get back to health. Cool. Heather is off to the grocery shop, 6.45 a.m. At 10, I have our first knitting group Zoom meeting. Ooh, exciting. Wow, you've not been in that group since March. So excited, I bet you are. Yes. See you soon. Thanks for joining us, Heather. And T Tiffany, crocheting toys is what hurt my fingers. It's tight, it is tight, and it is repetitive. I agree with you there, yes. Rose, thank you, ladies, that's very helpful. And thank you, Hannah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, Emily, that is Virgo, and it's V-I-R-G-O, as in the star sign. Kim, I would love to sew a memory bearer of my son's vintage baby clothes. Yes. Yes, and you can get very simple patterns like this online. I think I got this one from Etsy, this simple pattern. Yeah. Actually, I think I may have made this myself, this pattern myself. It's not difficult. It's, um, I saw similar ones on Etsy and I thought, oh, it's not that difficult, is it? Because an elephant needs an ear and that's it. Yeah. Um, I like Le Petit in Le Petit and Crochet or Noted in Crochet Amigurumi. Her style is so cottage chic. Oh, I'll go and have a look at that. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's good, Emily. Yeah. She'll be really inspiring for you. And she likes other jumper knitters as well. So if you kind of go into her who she follows, you'll find other knitters of very similar genre. And go and look at her hashtags too. This is a great way of finding hashtags that go in the right direction. You'll find lots of other jumper knitters. And just, oh, wow. In that case, I'm not alone. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> Rose, the little cotton rabbit pants are beautiful. Yes. Um, the tiny tail is cute. Yes, it is. I just tied a knot at the end of it when I'd sewn it. It's all sewn up at the end, but I tied a knot at the end of it. 
<laughs> There's a little one somewhere as well. So it's a big one and a little one with the same fabric. I made these and I just got carried away. I made them in so many different colors out of all my fabric scraps. And I just gave them to my nieces and nephews like when they were old enough to not have any worries with them. And actually I was um, talking about this in one of the, I'm going to have to go soon because it's gone over an hour. But in one of the um, questions I got, it was just yesterday on one of the profitable knitting videos. Can I sell baby items? Surely you can't do that because of the rules and regulations. Yes, there are rules and regulations about how you sew um, the stress tests that you have to do and fire damage and all this kind of stuff. So go and look if you want to do it ever. You need to go and look at the um, regulations in your country. When I actually started sewing these, I was considering selling them. So I did stress tests. My dad and I got out in the garden and we actually hung weights to see if that plait would come out. I hung weights on the um, end of her feet, see if the plait was going to come loose or anything like that. We also hung weights on the tail. And I wrote down, I think I did three seams when I put this put the um, tail in. So it's got three lots of sewing along the edge. That kind of thing is what you need to do. And you can also know that if you're using fabric that's got British standards in the UK, then it's not going to burst into flames when you put a flame to it. Because it's got so many regulations on the materials as well so yes you can do that you can do this test yourself oh i've lost a bit of light you can do the test yourself um and you can also get liability insurance and all that kind of stuff so just little things like that will help you and actually resolve any queries that you have I just went onto the government website and looked it up and it wasn't that difficult. It was, oh, okay, that feels easier because it's just a tiny little list and it was just do this and you'll be fine. They're not trying to make it difficult. They want small businesses to work and look at how many toys are out there that are fine. So it's not a problem, not a problem, it really isn't. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Sharon. It's lovely to have you here as well. And it wouldn't be the same without you because I'm answering all your questions and loving your comments as well. So thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. I will be back again next week. Um, and if you want to join me again next week, then do. And like I said, the Masterful Knitter is available until midnight tonight with the three month membership. So that's something that you can get if you join before midnight. Um, and then we start on something else. A new website, baby knitting. Ah, February's gonna be exciting. Oh, how long is the lockdown over here? For now, you have to realize we have England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland and we all talk about things, the different devolved governments talk about things in different ways. So we have until the February the 15th, definitely. And this is because it's the first half term of the school year, in the school year as in the 2021. Um, and that is definite, no one is going back to school. After that, we may have an extension, but, oh, but the children might be going back to school. It's difficult. Um, I hope, I hope we have a longer strict lockdown because we need the vaccines organised and we need um, we need the numbers to go down. Um, actually, I watched someone on television on the news yesterday. It was a very quick thing. He said it was um, one of the biggest problems we had this year. wasn't people meeting over Christmas. It was the the larger number of people going back to work after Christmas and in between Christmas and the new year and then going back in January 
because we've got more people who are supposedly key workers actually working. So they're traveling, they're meeting in offices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, <sighs> problems. <laughs> okay, all right. Bye Jackie, bye Rose. My sister is having a first baby at the end of July. I'd like to make them a toy. I'm quite concerned about the safety aspects. Stick to a blanket and a hat. They'll use a blanket for years. I knitted a blanket for my friends. She had triplets. I knitted one for each of them. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. And then one of them loved it so much. I had to knit him another one when he was four because he basically chewed and held onto it for so long. It was holes all over it. So I knitted him another one. And she swapped it and he didn't realise. So there you go. Blanket and... My sister has still got the blankets that I knitted for them as children. And they're blankets for the toys now. So Teddy Bear's got a blanket. Yeah, toy when they're older, definitely. They're going to have so many toys. So many toys. Rose, I was meant to be studying, but this is lovely. And I got some knitting done. Perfect. There you go. Right. <laughs> it's kind of hectic here. But we're down until February 15th. And I hope we're in down until the end of March, be perfectly honest. I really do. I will see you all next week and I'll just keep doing lockdown Fridays until I can't cope anymore. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me. Bye for now. Stay safe. Happy knitting.